Welcome everyone. So today's a really special day for me. We are here with someone who is so special to me, not only a dear friend, Sandra Maddox, but she has been my mentor. And she might not even know that for a long time she was my mentor. Um, because when I met her, I was stunned by how well she handled something, just the unthinkable. For a mother, any parent actually, she handled the unthinkable in a way that I can't imagine. So she lost her only child in a terrible accident, um, in an auto accident, I believe was a drunk mm -hmm. driver. Yes. And she was young, she was a young adult. And that for me, you know, as someone who suffered a lot of childhood trauma, for some reason, that's the one thing, well, for some reason, I think a lot of parents have mm -hmm. this. Um, that's the one thing I could never fathom was the idea of losing a child or seeing my child suffer in some way like that and then losing them. I just never thought I could survive something like that. And when I met you, to not only see that you had survived, clearly it left a mark, but you thrived and you went on not just that, but to really help just hundreds of thousands of women to, or make millions, because your book, your story has been told <laughs> in Chicken Soup for the Soul. You mm -hmm. wrote a children's book series, which is beautifully written. It really helped my daughter out. It opened a lot of questions that were interesting questions. Um, but it's, you've just done this in such an amazing mm -hmm. way. And I know you actually question, like a lot of us do through mm -hmm. grief, yeah. that where is God in all of this? Mm -hmm. How can he be a loving God mm -hmm. and let this happen? So welcome, Sandra. You're Thank just so you. special to me. Thank you, and you've become a dear Thank friend. You. Tana. So welcome to Grief Week. I know that's sort of odd, but over mm -hmm. this week, we're going to talk about what it is, how it impacts you, some practical things to do about it. Mm -hmm. And it's something that affects nearly all of us at some yeah. point. In different Definitely. ways. In, in our lives. Mm -hmm. Before we get to it, though, I have uh, one of our podcast reviews. Uh, can't get enough from Erica in the United States. Heard you speak at um, the Nerium Conference, which was so much fun for me. It was 26,000 people at the American Airlines Arena in Dallas. Didn't know my grandmother would pass of mm. dementia. And now my mother was diagnosed two mm. years ago and now lives with me. Your podcast is truly helping us change the legacy of our family. Awesome. Wow. So that's, that's why great. we do it. It's great. It's so wonderful. tell us a little bit about what happened. Sure. So it was uh, January, a cold day in January, as I remember it. And I always get up really early in the morning because I like to have that really special time with the Lord. You know, I have this special place I go to. And so it was just routine for me. And I had just taken the dogs out and fed them and was just sitting there. And I got a knock on the door. And actually, I didn't get I got a phone call from an old neighbor of ours. We lived next door to her. And they apparently had, the police had apparently gone to her house first because our address was there. And they wanted to know. I hadn't really changed my driver's license at that time yet. So it still had the old address and we had just moved to our new house. So um, they came knocking at the door and she's like, I don't know. They were talking about, do you have a daughter, you know, or something like that. They didn't say anything to her, but she directed them to our house. So I had gotten a, a knock on the door and they came to the door and asked if anybody was home. And I said, yes, you know, my husband's at home. Should I get him? And he said, yes, we'd like to talk to him too. So I had to go up and wake up Ron and come down and the two police officers told me what any mother's nightmare or father's nightmare would be is that your daughter passed away last night in a car accident. And it had been, um, she had been out with her friends. She was away at college. She was just shy of her 25th birthday. And she was out with college friends and they were, she knew she couldn't drink and drive. So she gave her keys to a friend and that friend thought that the other friend could drive her home and he really couldn't. And he was just a new friend of hers and he took hold of the keys and he was recklessly driving. Um, he was prosecuted years later um, with vehicular manslaughter and got the whole um, conviction time period during that time. So it was pretty devastating. And uh, during those few days, the early days were very numbing. I didn't think, I. it played in my head exactly what they said over and over and it didn't feel real. It didn't feel real. It felt like 
oh, this is a dream and I'm going to wake up pretty soon. But it really, it wasn't a dream. It was reality because then it was like, you know, the funeral and then it was like all this stuff. But I was pretty, pretty numb and um, just, you know, a lot of tears, as you can probably imagine. It was, you know, heartbreaking. She was my only child. And um, so as the weeks and the days went by, it's just really started to become more and more real. Lack of sleep, you know hardly slept um, but I knew in that moment when I sat stood over her grave I just knew it was God it was like this whole I knew he was there and I knew that he he had a plan for her and her days were numbered as it says in the Bible that we have our days are numbered and he knows every you know he knows the time for everything and I stood there and I it was like a, a motion picture rolling through my head, my whole entire life started to like flash before me. And it became like, oh, I know, I see now, God, you gave me the mom that I had. You know, my mom left us when we were young and I was 10 and I sort of became the mom of my family at a very young age. We lived with my dad and I knew that I wanted to do everything I could to be that mom that I didn't get during that time. I wanted to be that mom for my daughter. And he knew that I would do that for those years that I had her, you know, that I would pack her lunch, that I would be there at every dance thing, that I would do all this. So it just all these events that happened in my life, I could see God's hand in my life. And that's what got me through, you know, at first. And did I wrestle with the Lord? Yes. I sat every morning and really would wrestle. And then my husband would come home and he'd say, what did you do today? And I'd say, well, I just wrestled with God today. And he'd say, uh, how did that go? Who won? I, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he said, I'd say, uh, he did, you know. So it felt like that whole story of Job in the Bible where, you know, he goes on to say this and that. And then the Lord just pretty much stops him in his tracks and said, but who created the stars and who created the moon? And who, you know, it's kind of like, Okay, yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. You know, so that's kind of, you know, um, where I was at in those early days. It was how long did it? Painful. How long did it take you to sort of get back on your feet? Months. It was months. I had a dear friend who would come every Tuesday, and she would just sit with me. She would just sit with me. She had family, children of her own, and she would just come and sit with me for every Tuesday and gently got me to like, oh, do you think you might want to cook today? Let's go to the grocery store. Do you want to go for a walk today? And then that was the healing for me. The healing part was like walking on the beach. So friends would offer, you know, do you want to go for a walk today? And so I would go and walk with them on the beach and not say a word. You know, they may not, they didn't, and it was like months of that. And then um, just too raw. It was really raw. And it ached. It Like my body felt like if somebody touched me that I was just going to fall apart. Like it was going to melt my body. And my heart felt like it was going through a meat grinder every day. Oh. It just hurt. You know how you have like a broken heart, you know, if you've ever felt it's, that experience. It's a real thing. It is. So what happens, because I went through a period of grief before I met Tana, mm -hmm. and I it's like crushing chest pain. And, you know, and if you have crushing chest pain during grief, you should go to the doctor. Yeah. Because um, you just met my assistant who mm -hmm. lost her fiance and then she had crushing chest pain. And I went, oh, that goes with grief. But you should get it checked. Mm -hmm. And it turned out she had a 98% blockage in her coronary artery. Wow. And his death actually saved her life because wow. she had it fixed. So chest pain is normal in grief because your ventricles, so that's mm -hmm. the bottom two chambers of the heart, they start beating funny. Mm -hmm. And because they start beating funny, you're not getting enough blood to your heart. Mm. And it just hurts um, as if you're having a heart attack. One of the experiences I had with that, I, so I went to go see my doctors like the week after just, you know, for checkup and um, <clears throat> my, um, it was actually my OBGYN. She said to me, Sandra, grief sometimes will, I was 45 or 
I was going to turn 46 when Tiff died. And um, she said, this may kick you into menopause. And sure, I mean, sure enough, everything just quit in my body. Mm. Just, right, you the know. chronic yes. stress. And, right. and it's not the so. chronic stress, the flood of mm -hmm. stress. And that's yeah. not. And it um, doesn't stop. No, yeah. and that's not uncommon. Yeah. So that was. Um, and I, Which, so yeah, you just had a double kicks, hit. If yeah. it kicks you into exactly. menopause, then you can't think. Right. Exactly. And what you, said. you're sad. Mm -hmm. and Which you're more sad then. Mm -hmm. Getting your hormones balanced actually helps you grieve more efficiently. Mm -hmm. So people think there's um, goodness in grief, and there mm -hmm. is, but you go through it faster if you begin to take better care mm -hmm. of yourself physically. So here we always talk about four big circles that make us who we are. There's a biology to us. So mm -hmm. we're talking about hormones and mm -hmm. ventricular uh, arrhythmias. Um, there's a psychology. So what are you thinking and how does that connect to your childhood mm -hmm. wounds? There's a social circle. You your had friend amazing friends mm -hmm. coming over. Yes. That's healing. And then there's the spiritual circle, which is wrestling with meaning and mm -hmm. purpose and God. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's getting all of those circles optimized. So you can manage it so you don't want to kill yourself. And it sounded mm -hmm. like you did a pretty good job of that, even though it was hard. Yeah, it was, it, you know, it was funny because I didn't, I don't know why I went to the doctors. You know, I just felt like I wasn't feeling well. And someone said, oh, maybe they'll give you Ambien because you're not sleeping. Oh, my goodness. And so she, so. Don't take it. <laughs> don't so, take it. Now, and I didn't take it. <laughs> Trazodone, which is an antidepressant that actually is not very effective. But it's a great sleep aid <laughs> is, is my often go-to for grief, yeah. is Trazodone. Okay. So. Well, and, and I told myself, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to get through this. I'm just, I'm, I want to feel everything I need to feel. Mm. Everything I need to feel. You know? That's amazing. That's well, what I told you. myself. When we come back, I'm going to tell you a story that I probably told us before about grief of uh, someone who didn't do the right things. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are in day two of Grief Week and with our friend Sandra Maddox, who has been educating people around the world about grief. And that's part of something we're going to talk about called post-traumatic growth, because obviously what mm -hmm. happened was seriously traumatic. Mm -hmm. and you used it, are using it for good. Um, but you know, I promised you guys a story. I was in um, our Northern California clinic giving a lecture. And after I was done, this woman by the name of Chris came up to me and she just started crying. And that happens way too often <laughs> to me where people come up and they just start crying. And, you know, I've been doing this long enough. I just stand there until they stop. And then she told me this story. She said two years before her 12 year old daughter died of bone cancer. Hmm. Her 12 year old daughter, Sammy died of bone hmm. cancer. And part of her was glad she died because Sammy had been in so much hmm. pain. Bone cancer is just one of the yes. worst uh, cancers for pain. Hmm. And she said, and then I just, I went to bed and drank alcohol way too much and ate bad food. And on her five foot two frame ballooned over 200 pounds. <laughs> And on the two year anniversary of Sammy's death, she decided to kill herself, despite having three other children wow. and a husband. Wow. And she said, then I saw you on public television, um, my program, Change Your Brain, Change Your mm -hmm. Body. And I decided I would get your book. And if it was a bad book, I would kill myself tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm standing there going, oh my God. Goodness. You know, because I write yeah. in my chair. Yes. You know my chair. Yes. You, know? Yes. <laughs> you helped us. Yes. Right. I'm writing now. I'm like feeling all this pressure. And she said, but it was so easy. And I just did everything you said. I stopped drinking. I started eating the right things. I started walking. I started running. And 
now I've lost like 24 pounds. And I know Sammy would not have wanted me to engage mm. in the behaviors that actually made everything mm. worse. But what I liked was that she said within eight days, mm. she within began days to she feel better. Feeling. So that's important. Mm. Yeah. So she noticed a change pretty right. quickly. Right so grief is something, I mean, you can't stop it mm -hmm. because we are a bonded species, yes. right? That's right. how God made mm -hmm. us. We are meant to be connected, in yes. fact, loneliness and being disconnected is a major risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. And so by you talking about your friend coming over, your husband inquiring on how you mm -hmm. are, it's so important to build that community. And can I ask Sandra, because I already know the answer mm -hmm. to this, but I just think this is so important for people listening um, because I know how strong you are. You're just this very strong woman. As gentle as you are, you are strong. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a quiet strength. But you did something that in my mind, because we, we talk about pain to purpose, mm -hmm. which, which I have done in a very different mm -hmm. way. But what you did is just amazing. So tell us a little bit about the ministry you started in the books and, and how that has helped you. Because and then you can talk about post-traumatic growth because this is what she did. She You grew through mm -hmm. this process. Mm -hmm. So I had... Again, it's always so important to have those friends who come and like just sit and not really push you or do anything. Um, but it had been it had been about a month or two months, and I had a dear friend. She's a pastor's wife. She invited me to just come and sit in the back um, and go to the Bible study, and and uh, I'm grateful for that because it got me back into the world because I was you know at home, just taking visitors and all that kind of stuff. But it got me to get up and I knew I had to do it. I knew, you know, in my wrestling that the Lord was calling me to do something, you know, big. Because I remember um, when I was telling you that I was uh, sitting in front of um, Tiffany's grave, I remember um, Pastor Rick's book, you know, um, Purpose Driven Life. I remember there was a poem by Russell Kelfer, I think it's, his name is, and it says, you are who you are because I made you. You're part of the master's plan. Mm -hmm. The parents I gave you are for a reason, and they're stamped with the master's seal. So I knew what God was calling me to do, not to, not to sit there, but to, you know, share my story with others. And so when I went to this Bible study, I, I started feeling better and decided, um, like it was maybe a year later and the woman's ministry leader came in and I had been doing some of the mentoring in there. And she said, you know, we really want to start a mom's program. And at first I thought, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> like, you want me to start a mom's program with girls that are my daughter's age, right. 25, having babies, and that's not something I'll ever do. I'll never be a grandma. So it's, it, you know, for, for myself, it was a, a loss of a lot of different things. You know, I'll never see my daughter get married. I'll never be a grandma. And so, but then... It was like I said, okay, well, I'll just pray about it. But I knew it was from the Lord. I knew because he takes you, something that's really hard, and transforms you, transformed that grief for me. I knew it was from him. I knew he wanted me to walk in that. And now I've been leading a mom's ministry for 14 years. It's going to be on 15 years. and it, it, You have a lot of moms there. I have a lot of moms I've spoken there. for you. Yes, you have. There's a lot I of moms. Have. I have about, you know, run the class runs from anywhere 168 moms to like 197 or 200, almost 200. So you went from one child to 200. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Multiple. That's what everybody says. Like thousands of that. them all the time. I love you know? that. And then I started speaking to, in mom's conferences. So I do that. And with a, a gal, then I speak many times a year in big arenas in Dallas and other places and have been to Korea. And I even got to go speak um, at a purpose driven conference in my first Africa trip. Oh, and wow. I went to Malawi and they asked me to speak on grief. And I wow. went, what? What am I going to teach these people who grieve everything all the time? But I spoke to a bunch of pastors who cried and said, we we are alone in our grief. 
we are isolated. The mom stays isolated. The everybody stays isolated there. And they were crying, knowing that there's a better way, mm. you know, that they could have community and trying to break that cycle. So and important. It was, it was shocking to me. She, he, they told me that um, when someone like loses a child or just grieving in general, that they leave those people to mourn by oh themselves. My God. One of my favorite sayings is pain shared is pain divided. There's, yeah. there's nowhere in school. So even though grief is universal, mm -hmm. there's nowhere in school where people teach you no. how to do this. And how to help right? others. So it's so easy mm -hmm. to go to food or so easy to go to drugs or alcohol, alcohol. or psychiatric mm -hmm. medication. And I'm actually really good with psychiatric medication, <laughs> but it's never like the first thing I think about. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what you did is you went to this thing called post-traumatic growth because obviously it was a tr terribly traumatic, about 10% of people who go through a trauma develop PTSD, mm -hmm. develop a psychiatric disorder related to it. Mm -hmm. um, about 80% of people don't, which mm -hmm. is interesting. So we right. always think, oh, well, you went through this traumatic event, therefore you're going to suffer. Mm -hmm. it, not for everybody. Mm -hmm. But there's about 10% of people, and you fit in this, that go to post-traumatic growth. And I create a little mnemonic for, help me remember the components of it, spark. So there are spiritual changes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can relate to that. Yes, I can. But even though you were devastated and mm -hmm. questioned God, mm -hmm. it seems like your relationship with God is actually better. It is. It, I got to know him because I kept saying, okay, I'm just going to get in your face and I'm going to know everything <laughs> about you. I did. And I just kept I telling that. myself, okay, I'm not going to look down. I'm going to look up. And, you know, really, it was the closest I've ever felt him to That's me. That's powerful. I really felt him really close to me. And um, I, I just was, you know, obsessed with reading the Bible and reading the word and trying to know who he is and know who I was, you know, to him, that he loved me, that I was his child. He wasn't there to hurt me, you know, and there was a plan and a purpose for all of this. I, say I love that pain to purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Martin Luther uh, gave his life to God and a religious order after he survived a life-threatening thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. So often that trauma then turns in. Mm -hmm. The second thing in Spark is possibility is you see new possibilities mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of the trauma and grief. Mm -hmm. It's clearly what you did. Mm -hmm. uh, the third part is an increased appreciation of life. Um, you're better at appreciating each moment. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that happened with you. Uh, well, you just, things don't, things you you um, thought were important before became less important in the the people sort of in your lives things. yeah and the people in your lives become more important knowing that every every day is, you never know you know so you better tell your husband that you love him you mm -hmm. better tell your children that you love them that day because you don't know you don't know you don't know and so yes and the, you know that's what I tell my girls because a lot of them want to and when I say my girls I'm talking about the ministry yeah. the women that are in my the girls that are in my ministry and I tell them all the time today's the day the Lord has made you know focus on that child today. They want to rush in today's culture. Everybody wants to rush to grow their kids faster and do more and more and more. In reality, they should just sit. I have Enjoy. no regrets of you know, <clears throat> any of that. I you know, poured into my child. I mean, she gave her life to the Lord. It was just like, you know, I, I don't have regrets of that. So which, which some parents, when their children die, they do have some regrets that, mm -hmm. you know. They could have done it better. Right, right. Or differently. Mm -hmm. Spent more time. Yes. The R time. is a change in relationships where you relate to others in more meaningful mm -hmm. ways, just like you said. And the K, I love this, is kick-ass personal strength. <laughs> <laughs> if I can live through this, yes. then I can live through through. I've thought that so many times yes. in life. Yeah. Yes. So yes. when we I come back, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're going to talk about more t tips to survive grief. In fact, we're going to talk about things to not say to people when they are struggling with grief and some of the things you might want to say.
Welcome back to day three of Grief Week. This has been such an emotional week, and I'm just so grateful to how candid our friend Sandra has been. And I just want to say one thing. You can have a mentor. I think I've said this before, but you can have a mentor that doesn't know they're your mentor. You can follow people and model your lives after people that don't even know that you're following them. And that's sort of what I did with you mm -hmm. because this, your story has always been one of my greatest fears. Mm -hmm. And so I never wanted to say anything to mm -hmm. you about that because I always thought, what do you say to someone, which is what we're gonna talk about today, what to say and what not to say mm -hmm. to someone grieving. I never really wanted to say anything, but I always looked up to you. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, she's got so much grace and so much strength and mm -hmm. she's just got such an amazing character. And if that happened to me, I don't think I would be that way. And so you find people that have the strengths you want. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Yeah. So, so let's I have a fun mentoring story. So Tana and I got into a fight about something. We were not doing well. And <laughs> she told me, she sort of went to you and complained about me. Mm -hmm. And rather than what many friends do, which is, oh yeah, he's really an awful human being and you should be mad. Yeah, never have friends that do that. Yeah, you never. reflected back how she could respond in a helpful way that completely diffused what went on between And by the way, that is why I go to friends like Sandra. <laughs> and I don't go to friends that I know are gonna say, he's a jerk, let's go have a drink. Like, I don't do that. I don't believe in having <laughs> friends like that when you're married, because it's not helpful. So the friends you have, think about the friends mm -hmm. you have. It's important to have friends who elevate you and respect your marriage. Mm -hmm. So I just, that's a huge so thing. So I'm eternally grateful. And I think your fear about losing Chloe, because when we first met, I, it was, I had to go to therapy was, over it. The, yeah, no, I went to two years of therapy. Huge, but it's common. Mm -hmm. It's what I've heard as being a psychiatrist the last mm -hmm. 40 years, it's a very mm -hmm. common fear because when you love someone so mm -hmm. much, the I was fear so anxious. of losing yeah. them can really drive you a little bonkers. And, and I had a childhood that was full of trauma mm -hmm. like you did. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to be this mother. Yeah. I, see, I related to your story mm -hmm. on so many levels. Yeah. I wanted to be a mother that, like my mom was a great mom, but she wasn't there and she was young and she didn't have education. She's a great mom for what she had experienced, right. but she's not a great mom. But she mom. was young. Yeah. I'm finishing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to honor my mother though. Yeah. And I okay. love your mother. Yeah. So she is a mm -hmm. great mother-in-law. Right. So she, great but we mother. didn't have it. She didn't have an education. Yeah. We didn't have finances. She was right. gone all yeah. the time. Yeah. So I wanted to be something different mm -hmm. if I could. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, and th that fear, mm -hmm. and I wanted to create that. And I just, I ended up with this fear that I didn't even want her out of my sight. Mm -hmm. And it was hard. Mm -hmm. And when I saw you and I saw something different, I'm like, oh, there's someone I can model myself after. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so important. Mm -hmm. So actually I have a podcast review I want to read, um, Overcoming ADD. I love Tana Amon's no sense, no nonsense approach to nutrition. <laughs> And listening to the podcast has taught me many valuable lessons to help my brain, my life, especially when it comes to dealing with my ADD. This is from Alicia from the U.S. Thank awesome. you for listening. Please um, leave more podcasts. Mm -hmm. Now, in my new book, Feel Better Fast and Make It Last, please get it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole section on post-traumatic stress disorder and grief mm -hmm. because th there's so many people suffer with those issues that I thought, well, what are the ways you can feel better quickly? And, and part of it is a process, but there are clearly things you can do to hurt yourself and clearly things you can do to help yourself. And in it, while I was thinking about it, I, I thought, well, what are things you really shouldn't say to someone who's grieving? Well, one of the things somebody said to me was, um, you know, I just lost my dog. I know how you oh feel. Oh, my God. No. So don't say that to somebody. Don't say that. Don't say that. Or oh, your pet just... or something. And you're kind of like, oh, you know. And, and I and understand. loss of pet is yes. really, it's really it's important. A, but yeah, important. It's, it but is. But it's not the same thing. No, it's not. So, you know, the comparing to to different 
you know, their losses. And, and you can't really, compare losses. No, you can't. Ever. And, no. So what do you think about the, the list? Um, how are you doing? It's one thing not to say, because they're doing yes, terrible. How right. are you doing? You'll be okay after a while. Right. I understand how you feel. You shouldn't feel that way. Mm. Stop crying. At least she's in a better place. Uh, yeah. At least she lived a long life. Many people die young. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, I've had so many mothers who've lost babies. Yeah. Um, she brought this on herself. Um, aren't you over it yet? He's been dead for a while. People don't really say these things. They <laughs> yes, do. they do. Uh, there, they is, do. there is they a reason really just for everything. Horrified. They really do. God's in charge. Yeah. She was such a good person. God wanted her to be with him. Just give it time. Time heals. Time does not heal unless you take the right steps. Right. You're young. You can still have other children. Mm. Yes. Um, you'll do it better next time. It was just a dog or a cat. You can have another one. Stay busy. Don't think about it. Which is actually how Lincoln handled it. So Lincoln lost um, one of his children while he was Mm. in the White House. And his wife actually became psychotic Mm -hmm. after that happened. He dug his son up several times because he couldn't let go. (laughs) So sad. And he worked to get over his grief. And he never really got over his grief. Um, You have to be strong for your spouse, your children, and just move on. So did anyone say anything else to you? I want to see if they said anything else to her. Um, No, those are pretty base. Those are pretty things that, and actually they're hurtful. And and I remember one time I was at um, the grocery store. I was at Bristol Farms and it was really early on. And a woman that I knew very well you know, saw me and she turned around and went the other way. She actually saw me. I saw her and she turned around the other way. She She probably didn't know what to say. Um, So it made her uncomfortable. So it made her uncomfortable. Conflict of Which grief does with people. Well, because it's our fear. Yes, it is. And like, you don't want to look at that in the face kind of thing. So, you know, that in itself was hurtful. She may not have, you know, she probably just could have come up and just hugged me, you know, or just... I mean, really, there are no words that anybody is going to say to you to make you feel any better than what you're, you know, the ache in your heart. So, but when you don't say anything. And but when you, you get hug, disconnected from yes. people you know, yes. it's worse. Yeah. Yes. And that happens a lot in grief. I, I had, um, I've been able to counsel a few people from, you know, Saddleback has said, you know, they just lost a child Mm. in a car accident. Can you go and talk to the parents? And so I wait for a while and call them. And a lot of times, um, you know, the parent, they're dealing with relatives and family that aren't, you know, cooperating or, you know, think it's all about them as well. And so a lot of times you have to put boundaries, you know, with certain people Mm -hmm. too, because the grief is, you know, you, you're, if you're wanting to, be in that place of grief and experience everything, which is healing grief, you know, crying. I mean, um, it's closure, closure. right? So one of my very first, I never told you the story. One of my very first patients was a Lieutenant Colonel. I was in the army when I trained, Mm -hmm. I was a Walter Reed and he just had this rash all over his body and they couldn't figure it out. So they go, Mm -hmm. it's psychosomatic. And he'd lost his wife two years before Mm -hmm. and had never cried. Mm. And so it comes out in other, other ways. ways. That yeah. stress and yeah. your skin mm-hmm. is actually one of the organs that the neck and back problems stress. are common too. Yes. yes. So yes. one thing, um, Sandra, that's that I find interesting because I, I I watch you and how you handle mm-hmm. things. I know that that's probably a pain. That's I don't know if it's a pain that doesn't go away. I would assume it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's always you're always going to think about her and love her yes. and be a little sore. Yes. Right. You're gonna have that yes. scar. But what I've noticed that you still do is you honor her. Mm -hmm. You still acknowledge her birthdays. Mm -hmm. And I know you came up to me in January Mm -hmm. and you asked me to pray for you. Mm -hmm. And you said it's going to be a hard day Mm -hmm. because I just I just want my friends to pray for me and be around me. Yes. Um, Because it was January, Mm -hmm. the date you said it was the anniversary Mm -hmm. of Mm -hmm. when the accident Mm -hmm. had happened. And I just thought that was Amazing. I'm like, you mm-hmm. You got your family together and you celebrated her birthday. Mm-hmm. You So you still do these things, mm-hmm. but they don't seem, they don't, from my perspective, seem to influ- impact you negatively. In fact, you seem to gather your tribe around mm-hmm. you and they, 
You yeah. honor her and it strengthens you. Yeah, I learned it was easier for me to embrace my grief on holidays and, you know, just let everybody know, hey, you know what? Yes, it's a happy time and my family's here, but someone's missing. It's like a limb. Someone's missing right. from from our family. And so we acknowledge the fact, but we don't stay in it. Um, we acknowledge her birthday. Mm -hmm. My siblings, we do things like, you know, she liked going to P.F. Chang's and listening to, you know, County Crows. And so we kind of have our little things that we kind of do, you know, on that day of her birthday on April 5th. And so, and I do ask my my family and my friends to pray for me because it is a struggle. Grief will never go away from my life. I mean, thinking about her, you just get, you get, um, it's not that you move on from it or anything. It's still there, but you are able to function in life with the reality that someday I'm going to see her again. Cause I have a big picture of her in my hallway. Um, the last picture that we had all taken, that was really a gift from the Lord. Um, she had come home for my birthday and we took that picture and it went out for everybody in January. Cause I give out new year cards. Everybody had that picture of Ron, Tiffany and I in January, um, as our new year card. So that picture hangs in my hallway. And I walk by it all the time and I always say to her, I'll see you in a blink of an eye because mm. that's kind of what the Lord says, you know. So and because of what happened, she her life has touched millions of other people. What is the and, name and of your so book? So it's 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 that little shift. Um, I want us to talk before we stop and then we'll, we'll stop and come back is well, what are some things to say? Mm. And mm. I'm sorry for your loss. Mm hmm. Because you are. Mm -hmm. It's just honest. Yeah. I, I wish I had the right words. Right, right. Please know I care and I'm here for you. You and your loved ones are in my prayers. I have someone who I'm very close to whose husband's dying of cancer. And just the fact that I reach out mm -hmm. and say I'm thinking yes. about you yes. today. Yeah. Is there anything I can do to help? Mm -hmm. They started a GoFundMe campaign mm -hmm. to help deal with some of the expenses. Mm -hmm. And I donated yeah. just to do like, um, connect, yes. connecting. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't imagine how you feel, which is honest. Right. I can't it's imagine honest. how you Being feel honest. unless yeah. I've gone through something right. similar. Um, I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, mm -hmm. can I go to the funeral, which is an often, often important sign of support. Want to talk about what happened. Just be present like your friend was. Share a memory. Be empathic. It's okay for you to show your feelings. Continue connecting even after months. This is so important because mm -hmm. people like they'll say one yep. or two things and then they'll let yes. you go yes. because they don't know what right. to do. Listen for guilt. People who are grieving often feel guilty and wish they'd done something different. I've seen that mm -hmm. so often. Um, so an example from one of my favorite you books touched on that. Mm -hmm. called The Grief Recovery Handbook. Griever, my son committed suicide. I feel so guilty. Grief recovery special. Specialist, did you ever do anything with intent to harm your son? Griever, no. The dictionary defined definition of guilt implies intent to harm. Mm. Since you had no intent to harm, can you put the G word back in the dictionary? Oh, You're probably hmm. devastated enough by the death of your son. Hmm. Hmm. I never thought of hmm. it that way. Yeah. Yeah. All right. When we come back, more practical tips yeah. on dealing with something we're all going to deal with or have dealt with, grief. <laughs> Welcome back to day four of Grief Week. We're still here with Sandra. Um, thank you for being here. Sandra Maddox. Sandra and Maddox, yes. You can yes. get her books. What where? is the title of your book? Book Tiff series? Oh, well, actually, it's Tiffany and the Talking Frog in Search of the Crown of Righteousness because kids can't say uh, righteousness. So that's great. Righteousness. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cute. <laughs> and then I'm in... Um, uh, Chicken soup, chicken soup for the soul. soul, the grief one. So my, you'll find my story in that as well. Awesome. So and they then can you get those on Amazon. Yeah, on Amazon. And Noble or... Amazon. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yes. Okay. So let's read a testimonial really quickly before we get started. Uh, this is Rocked My Life. As someone who's been through seven concussions, five from college cheer, one from Aikido punching 
from a kiddo punching. I'm I'm thinking Aikido, like <laughs> martial arts. It's just my natural. One from a kiddo punching me. One from car accident, wow. and has tried everything under the sun to feel better, and most of all to be understood. I was so relieved when my mom recorded Dr. Raymond's PBS message for me one evening. I immediately became hooked on his methods and have been absolutely blown away by his abilities to revamp the brain in the most natural and holistic way. Standard medicine isn't always getting it right anymore, and to find a program like Dr. Raymond's has been life-changing, and I've been reading his book and listening to his podcast due to low funds from Medical Bill Nation, but cannot wait to order the rest of the Master Kit and Cookbook. Both as a speech language pathologist and a brain injury survivor, mm-hmm. I highly recommend his program and his podcast. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. This is Liz White SLP. Mm-hmm. Thank you. That's why we do what we do. Mm-hmm. It is. So that mm-hmm. is our purpose. Um, when we finished last time, um, one of my favorite parts about the Grief Recovery Handbook was they talk about so, when should you start recovering from grief? And they gave the analogy, if you broke your leg, when would you start recovering from the broken leg? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Immediately. Immediately. And I've right. heard so many people say, well, get, I want to wait a couple months until I'm in a better like frame of mind. I, I don't really sort of get that. Mm-hmm. What is the th- rationale? Is people think they should suffer. Mm-hmm. And with grief, especially the kind of grief we've been talking mm-hmm. about, you are going, You're going to, suffer, to suffer. Yes. Right? Yes. But you can make it worse mm-hmm. or you can make it better. But if mm-hmm. you're going to suffer, why not suffer along with someone who can help you? Right. And so one of the first things um, Ron and I did was we made a decision to go to therapy together. Oh, interesting. So we found a therapist, a, a, you know. Like a grief of, specialist? Yes. Yeah, oh. A pastor um, at our church that had you know, lost a child himself and he dealt with some of those things. And so we that was a went great to, idea. we went to see him because as in marriage, um, the percentage of divorce with a couple who has lost a child is like 90%. Oh, wow. Which is also true if they have a disabled child. Yeah. Or oh, like wow. an autistic it's child. It's crazy. It's 90%. My husband said, you mean like people who don't know the Lord? And so he's like, no, it doesn't matter. It's like 90% because of the way you grieve when grief sometime what, you know, one day you may be in it and that person may not be. And, you know, there's this the dynamics and the nine. Yes. The dynamics, but we made a decision to enter into each other's griefs. Mm. And I think that that was one of the things that in friendships, find those people that'll enter into your grief, that will walk with you into your grief. That will I like help that you term. Through. You know? Enter into each other's grief. Yes. And it sounds like you gave each other permission yes. to do that. We let certain people. Now, you know, not everybody's a safe person Mm-mm. to do that. So you have to think about that as well. But there are people who will, will enter into that place. Like my friend who came to sit with me for weeks, you know, and the people that we had um, around us that would bring us food and, you know, just helped. So, but um, yeah, we started right away. Like I said, I went to my you know, for, for a physical right away. I remember my sister taking me to that. I remember, you know, Ron and I going, this was early. I don't have the the early days are so numbing, but I do remember in that first week, that's exactly what we did. And I don't know if somebody told us that, or we just thought it was the best thing to do. We don't know. That's actually a great Mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. Entering into each other's grief. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a great term. Mm -hmm. So from Feel Better Fast, some tips, start healing as soon as possible. There's no advantage to putting it off. Keep a brain healthy routine. So make Mm -hmm. sure you're eating Mm -hmm. healthy food, exercising, going for walks, getting as much sleep as you can. Now, some people can't sleep at all Mm -hmm. because it's like you've just been shot with terrible cocaine. I mean, your body just feels Mm -hmm. amped. And many people complain of diarrhea or irritable bowel syndrome Mm -hmm. because you're intestinal tract is basically 30 feet of smooth muscle and what happens to muscle when you get stressed it cramps Mm. it clamps down um discover what was left unsaid or unfinished and write it out Mm -hmm. and share it with someone there's actually whole therapies around Mm. um writing what happened Mm -hmm. and looking at it from Mm -hmm. an adult perspective Mm -hmm. 
be on the alert for an ant infestation. So we always talk about ants, automatic negative thoughts, <laughs> yes. the thoughts that come into your mind automatically and ruin your day. And the guilt ants, mm -hmm. or we call them guilt beating ants, come out and jump all over you. So whenever you're sad, if you can, write down what you're thinking mm -hmm. and then ask yourself, is that true? Mm -hmm. That's um, good. Write out the story of what happened, including mm -hmm. the Which positive you did. Yes, I did, or did. negatives for 15 mm -hmm. minutes a day for just a week. It has been shown in research studies to help. Mm -hmm. Reach for support, uh, which you were able to do, address physical pain, uh, <laughs> emotional mm -hmm. pain. So don't forget, sometimes if grief triggers chest pain, you need to see and it back there. pain is a big it's, one back and neck pain it tends to come out in ways because and people think oh well that's just psychological well yeah it is all in your head because when those stress hormones are released it causes pain mm -hmm. well, causes you to feel more pain you tense is those muscles right. tense around the nerves which, and you do have more pain and so sometimes it's hypnosis real. can help or mm -hmm. meditation mm -hmm. can help deep relaxation mm -hmm. My, one of my favorites, progressive muscle relaxation, mm -hmm. can be very helpful, guided imagery. One of the things on on that, um, our therapist told us to take time and step away from the grief, like mm. take a little vacation from it. Like, And I was like, what does that mean? Well, what he meant was, you know, if we like to do golf together, go and do golf so that you can forget it's going to come back. He says it's it's going to be there when you but get back. But are you willing to sort of set it aside yes, for exactly. He would tell us to set it aside, go do something like go play like golf that. or even go like take a, a day trip somewhere just to kind of not think about that. See the outside world So he's not telling you get over it. No, no, he's no. He's just telling you take a little take vacation. Take a little vacation from the grief. And we always, I like, he said, take That's a break from the grief. And we were like, what does that mean? And so he explained that it was just like, you know, go take a day and go get a massage. Mm -hmm. Or he said, you know, it, when you come back, it's going to be there. It's not, it's not to take you away from it. It's just to give you a little break. A little from, breather. A little breather. I like so that. I thought that was That's really actually great. interesting that um, he said that. And we put that into um, a routine for us that, you know, we knew it was going to come back. And we knew we could, you know, the things we could do. And I love that. So, yeah. That's actually awesome. That's one of the things we did. Whenever you get triggered by an anniversary, birthday, holiday, place, song, smell, mm. let the emotions wash over you and try to be grateful for the memories yeah. you do have. And, and that's what I like about you just, mm -hmm. rather than waiting for it to happen, you sort of embrace mm -hmm. it and bring it. Mm -hmm. And I just, I thought, and so you almost, it's almost like you are, you are controlling the, not controlling, you're directing. It's like, I know, I know I'm going to get triggered. Mm -hmm. So why don't I sort of direct mm -hmm. the dialogue mm -hmm. here? Why don't I sort of like embrace what's about mm -hmm. to happen? Mm -hmm. And that way you have a bit more control. Yeah. Well, and it always comes on, you know, right before the day of and the mm -hmm. day after. It's like a, you know, it's like it's coming. It's, you know, it's coming and you know, the flood of memories are going to come, especially when it's a birthday or, you know, it's it or the anniversary. It's just a, and Ron and I made um, a commitment to one another that on those days, uh, you know, so long as family's okay and, you know, we still have uh, parents around mm -hmm. that we take off and we go away I like that. during, you know, the, in January and in April for specifically those days right there, we take off and we, we honor her memory. We go somewhere and we just honor that, or we just stay together and quietly reminisce about things. And, you know, it, it, it's just a, it's just the way we are able to cope with those holidays that are, are birthdays that are really special, you know, in her life and we want to honor her. I mean, God gave us her. We loved her. We want to remember her. Mm -hmm. We don't want to forget, you know? Right. I well, and that. you've honored her in just one of the most beautiful ways you can honor someone mm -hmm. is you change people's lives mm -hmm. because of her. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And your relationship with her. Mm -hmm. And I, I have one, um, one thing that I want to ask you about that is what, did anyone ever say anything that really helped you sort of step up a little bit? that helped you sort of like, I know you had friends that came and they sat with mm -hmm. you. Was there ever a point where they sort of pushed you or nudged you just a tad, or is it best to just sit? 
well, starting the mom's group was yeah. one. That <laughs> was one. Totally yes. That. yes. But, yeah. but in the grief where they were sitting with you, was there a point where they sort of like, um, no, my, um, the friend that I told you that it would come every Tuesday, she did, um, push me one day and say, you know, maybe we should cook dinner. Maybe you should cook dinner for Ron tonight or you know she kind of okay so those little things little like did she feel it out or did she just I think she no she felt it out okay you know and I I don't think I did it I don't remember the first time I did it I think you know I'm like first time was like no first time was like Mm -hmm. it's you know one of the reasons for divorce is people go so far inside themselves that they actually sort of forgot, Mm -hmm. like Chris, that she had a partner. Yes. And it's easy to do. That partner can get really lonely Mm -hmm. and because they have their own grief Mm -hmm. and can go away. Yes. So it's like you said, it's a vulnerable time. Mm -hmm. Um, We have to stop. But I want to read this quote, from one of my favorite quotes from Elizabeth Mm -hmm. um, Mm Kubler-Ross, who's a psychiatrist that uh, her specialty was death and dying. And when I was a senior at Vanguard, uh, where I went to college, I took a death and dying Yeah, class, me too. And it helps so much. Really? Um, mm-hmm. And she, she writes, um, it is the denial of death that is partially responsible for people living mm-hmm. empty, purposeless lives. Mm-hmm. For when you live as if you and your loved ones will live forever, it becomes too easy to postpone the things mm-hmm. you know that mm-hmm. you must do. What you said. Mm-hmm. Ask yourself constantly does this worry does this problem does this moment have eternal value that's one of my favorite Mm -hmm. questions on the planet does this have eternal value Mm -hmm. because if it doesn't is it worth me worrying about it's what you said Mm -hmm. it's essentially what you Mm -hmm. said earlier Mm -hmm. is you you become more acutely aware of the things that are important right so they can find your story in Chicken Soup for the Soul, mm-hmm. the book on grief. grief yes. And I think it's called Grief Recovery or also something like the, that. Also, the children's, it's a book or a series? It's just a book. It's a book. It's okay. a book with a, with a series coming down the road. <laughs> awesome. And say the name of the book it's again. It's called um, Tiffany and the Talking Frog in Search of the Crown of Rye Chestnuts. <laughs> I love that. And it's about Sandra a little girl Maddox having a pretty party. And you can get those on Amazon. Um, do you have a website or people know when you know, you're going to speak? You know, I have a blog and it's called theartofdomesticity.com. And you, you can go on that and find the a lot of... The art of... Domesticity. Ah, uh, okay. Now I got <laughs> the art of domesticity. I love that. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. So much Thank fun. Thank you. If you're enjoying the Brain Warriors Way podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you'll always know when there's a new episode. And while you're at it, feel free to give us a review or five-star rating as that helps others find the podcast. If you're interested in coming to Amon Clinics, use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amonclinics.com. For more information, give us a call at 855 978-1363.